Hey, this is Ministry Briefing. I'm Matt Steen. With me is Todd Rose. And, and Todd, today's story ripped straight out of Ministry Briefing, which, as an aside, every pastor should buy right now by going to <laughs> ministrybriefing.tv slash YouTube. Pick up a yearly subscription, get a free, well, win a chance, get a chance to win a free Acer Chromebook. Details on the site. But Todd, um, today, a, a story that we picked up, um, picked up on from the American Baptist Press News, talking about how uh, Brent Detweiler, um, who was formerly affiliated with Sovereign Grace, was calling out the Southern Baptist Convention, um, saying that they're enabling the sin of C.J. Mahaney by allowing him to speak in their churches, by bringing them to events and and, and, and college conversations, all that kind of stuff. Todd, have you, have you heard any of this? What do you think about this? Yeah, you know, I was just looking at a, at a different article on a different website this morning that was kind of saying the same thing to the Gospel Coalition. How long are you going to build this guy up is essentially what they're saying. When are you going to renounce what he's doing? Of course, um, uh, Sovereign Grace is kind of in the middle of a – a sexual, yeah, a sexual allegation uh, lawsuit. A um, lot of problems there. They have churches that are that are leaving. Now, this Brent Detweiler, uh, I've followed him a little bit. I don't know if you read any of the the, uh, the things that he put out last year. Um, and I, I have mixed feelings um, about all of that. Uh, so I, I, I I look I look at it and I know that I know it seems as though Brent has a has an axe to grind because he was pretty unceremoniously booted out of Sovereign Grace and a lot was mm -hmm. said to him. But he was he was wrong significantly um, from from the sound the sounds of it. You know, and not being a part of the story, I don't know for certain. But to read to read what was what he's put out and to hear some of his story and. You know he he does have a significant axe grind, so I, I think from another messenger, this story would probably have a little bit have more legs. But at the same time, I mean the guy's got a point. He, there's, I mean, Mahaney is in in many ways involved in the lawsuit going on in Montgomery County, Maryland, about hiding child sex abuse. Yeah. You know, in the flagship church for for Sovereign Grace back in what was it the 80s. Yeah, yeah, it goes back, goes back quite a ways. You know, this is this is a good question because I I grew up very fundamentalist, separatist Baptist. Okay, so and we had this doctrine that that we called secondary separation. Okay, do you, do you, are you familiar with secondary separation, Matt? I can only imagine. Secondary separation is uh, that I can't associate with anyone who associates with somebody that I disagree with. Okay, so Matt, you and I might be on the same page theologically, okay? But you might have a friend yeah. um, who's a four-point Calvinist, and, and I'm a five-point Calvinist, so not only should you break fellowship with that person, but I need to break fellowship with you because you fellowship with that. That's the, that's the degrees of secondary separation, okay? So that's, that's what I grew up with. This is really what uh, what uh, Brent Detweiler is asking the SBC to do, what this other website is asking the Gospel Coalition to do. is isn't necessarily second degree of separation. It's just separation. When, when do you ask somebody, or when do you expect that someone will separate themselves, uh, that's kind of an old term, uh, or not associate with this person anymore? Detweiler is saying, Southern Baptist Convention, You've got a guy here that uh, I've documented, and, and he's, what, 500 pages or something like that of internal emails and everything, and it's damning stuff if, yeah. you, if you go through it. It is. Um, I've done everything I can to show you. It's, I think for him it's, it's a justice thing. It's like this isn't right and it needs to be corrected. And I'm a justice kind of guy, so I get that. But he said to the SBC, I've showed you all of this stuff. On top of it, there's a lawsuit, a sexual misconduct lawsuit that this guy's right smack dab in the middle of. And you mean to tell me you're still inviting him to your, speak in your churches and to speak at your conferences? What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and the same with this, uh, this other website that's, that's asking essentially the Gospel Coalition to say, say the same thing. Mm -hmm. I find it extremely difficult, Matt, particularly when you know the person. 
uh, that's going through this type of a thing, uh, for you to it puts you in a different. I can speak all day. I don't know CJ, so I can speak all day long about what the SBC or the Gospel Coalition should do. If I knew CJ, it would be much more difficult for me. I think. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean I wouldn't have an opinion on it. It just means that it would be much more difficult to share that opinion. Now, does that mean that I would still, if I was in charge of a big Southern Baptist church, that I would invite CJ, who's my friend, to come and speak at the church? I don't think I would right now. Not, not, with, not with the pending legal condition that's going on. Yeah. Some of the other personality issues, maybe. I don't know. What, what, what's your take on this? Um, I, I think you're right. I think that there's there's a time when it, you know you maybe be in a timeout. I mean that's an awful way of putting it, but just but he did. He just took a timeout. Well, man, that was a sabbatical, and you know that was that was something different. I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, as far as as far as his friends and stuff, saying you know, man, I still love you. I can't have you speaking here. Mm-hmm. And you know, if he's he's been in ministry long enough, I, he better get that. I would think he would get that, right? Well, I would think so. I would think so. You know, uh, you know, when when you're going around doing the together for the gospel conference, or I think that's the conference that they do. Him and and yeah. um, so you know Al Moeller and some of these big Southern Baptist uh, you know guys. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to be. Are you kidding me? Why don't you stand up for the gospel? <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, that's, that's what that's what this cloud is. You know that that's it. And so, so many times, even somebody's mere presence um, compromises the message of what an entire event or entire movement is trying to trying to to communicate. I mean, one of the good, one of the best things that could possibly happen for Sovereign Grace right now is that he is no longer being the president. He's turning over the he's turning over day to day operations, all that kind of stuff. I mean, granted, it took significant pain and heartache for that to happen, I think, you know, with, but did you see their statement? What, 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 uh, Sovereign Grace's statement about CJ and what a wonderful leader he was. You, you know enough about succession planning that you know that that's kind of the game you have to play in many ways. Is it an honest game? Uh, well, it's a political game. Does that do that? Does that do them any good? To the to the people, if I'm in a sovereign grace church and I have a problem with C.J. Mahaney, yeah, and and, and I'm I'm seriously, if, if I'm sorry, you have a problem with C.J. Mahaney, you're not going to be a sovereign grace church. But no, but I'm a, I'm teetering here. Yeah. Do I want to continue to be a sovereign grace church? Uh, he's going to step down. Do I want to continue with the new leadership? And then the new leadership says, "Man, this guy's been the best thing since grated cheese." Um. That's that's probably going to tip me as a sovereign grace grace guy on the on the edge to say nothing's changing here. Well, yeah, I mean if you're if you're already catering on the edge and kind of leaning towards the towards. The, I think a lot of them are. Yeah, from I what think, I read. I, I think I think it's going to be really telling what happens in the next six months. Yeah, I mean if me if if Mahaney and and I think I don't I tend to think that people get this. You know, in order you know in succession, it's how do you set the person up on their way out. You know, whether it's financially, whether it's ego-wise, you know, whether it's, you know, you, you got to give them the affirmation. you got to give them the attaboys. You've been here 30 years. You know, you, you, don't, you don't say, when you came here 30 years ago, we started off with 500 people. Now we've got 12. Now, it's, <laughs> you've, you've had 30 years of phenomenal life-changing ministry. Thank you. Thank you. And is it honest? I don't know. I mean, the guy put his yeah. heart you're, you're you're dipping into one of my pet peeves in the whole staffing area, though. Is is oh, I but I it's I don't necessarily like it. It's not something that it's not something. But I also I it makes me I'm feel a, dirty. I'm a bit of a pragmatist in that if that's what it takes to get the dude out the door, that's kind of what you got to do, right? Without yeah. splitting the church. Yeah, that's very pragmatic. <laughs> regardless, regardless of, I mean, regardless of, of, of how poorly somebody's minister, I'm not saying this about CJ yeah. in particular. I'm just, no. you know, no, there's, he's got supporters, and yeah. you know, in 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 the interest for the unity of the church, I think everybody kind of plays the game. And I don't know, am, am I nuts? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think we've diverted into. Uh, yeah, I think that's a whole other minister roofing segment is on on wow. honesty and transitions, uh, which I think churches are are horrible at. But um, 
back to the to the CJ thing. I mean, it will be interesting not only to see what happens with Sovereign Grace, and I have absolutely no ties. Don't know CJ. Don't I couldn't name you one Sovereign Grace person. Uh, well, I probably could, but I don't know them. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with Sovereign Grace, that movement. But it will also be interesting. Watch the Gospel Coalition. Watch the SBC. Uh, watch some of these conferences that regularly have CJ and and uh, um, and, and watch because I, I'm I think that there's probably going to be some distancing. Um, and these kind of articles kind of draw attention to that, but I think it probably would would happen naturally over time as well. And again, I don't know anything about CJ other than what I've what I've read, um, uh, both good and bad. But um, situations like this, I don't know what to do other than just to pray for the whole thing because these these type of clouds do not do good things for the kingdom overall. Oh, no, not, at all. Yeah. not at all. And and you're welcome for that for that uh, lesson on on uh, second uh, yeah <laughs> two degrees of separation. You're welcome for that. I, I can I can die complete now. Thank you. Yes, you, you can. Well, this is just one of the ministry briefing stories that we talked about uh, in this current issue of ministry briefing. You can pick it up at ministrybriefing.tv slash YouTube. And uh, we every month we do about 150 of these stories that we think are just really important for you as a church leader to know about. Check it out, ministrybriefing.tv slash YouTube.